Did the Megalodon evolve into the Great White? A huge whale-eating shark the size of a semi-truck and with teeth that were bigger than most people's hand dominated the oceans millions of years ago. This shark was called Megalodon, and its evolution has been the topic of heated debate among scientists for over 150 years. Until recently, a lot of paleontologists were sure that one of the most ferocious marine predators of our time, the Great White Shark, descended from the mighty Megalodon. Well, recent findings are bringing this long-held belief into question. Before you find out the truth about the real connection between the Meg and the Great White, don't forget that we have tons of exciting and informative videos like this one coming out every single day. So join the bright side of life by clicking that subscribe button and ring the notification bell so that you don't miss a thing. All right, now, the age-old question that's been tormenting experts for centuries. Do these two sea predators share the same family line? Let's start from the beginning. In October 1966, Danish anatomist Niall Stenson received a package containing the head of a great white shark. Imagine the male person who had to deliver that thing. Stenson had just started his career, but despite his little experience, he was extremely talented at dissection. When he was examining all the shark's numerous teeth, he noticed they were strikingly similar to glossopetrae, also known as tongue stones. These were basically inexplicable pieces of rock in a triangular shape that were found on land in different locations. However, until then, nobody had been able to understand their origin. Some theories stated that these unusual rocks fell from the sky at night, while others believed them to be snake teeth that St. Paul had turned into stone. But Stenson's discovery provided convincing evidence that Glossopetrae were, in fact, fossilized shark teeth. And since some of these rocks were about seven inches long, this was a somewhat unsettling discovery. After all, they were much bigger than any great white's teeth, which were rarely more than two and a half inches long. Despite the size difference, their shapes were pretty similar. This fact made scientists come to the conclusion that the great white shark evolved from some ancient supersized shark, aka the megalodon. Even today, some paleontologists stick to this theory. The problem was in difficulties that researchers had every time they tried to reconstruct prehistoric sharks. The thing is that a shark's skeleton is made of cartilage, which tends to decompose much faster than bone. That's why over the years, scientists have only managed to gather just a few vertebrae of a fossilized megalodon. As a result, they have to build all their theories upon the shark's teeth, which preserve better since they're made of bone. And because sharks regularly shed their teeth, researchers have managed to acquire quite a few fossilized megalodon teeth. With all these examples that showed striking similarities between the ancient shark and the modern great white, like their shape, structure, and saw-like edges, it seemed only natural to assume that the more recent species descended from the older one. As for the megalodon, it was the largest predator that's ever lived on this planet. It could get up to 60 feet long, which is about the size of a semi. It could weigh over 70 tons. To put that into perspective, that's the combined weight of about 10 elephants. Now the sperm whale that we have nowadays might be longer than the megalodon, but the ancient shark was heavier. And if we speak about the great white, it only gets about 23 feet long and usually weighs no more than three and a half tons. Yeah, it's still big compared to us humans, but tiny in comparison to its presumed ancestor. The megalodon was 20 times heavier and three times longer than the great white shark. Just imagine that thing in the water. Mm. Of course, the giant needed a lot of food to fuel its massive body. Researchers estimate that a full-grown megalodon probably consumed about a ton of food every day. And it had a particular taste for whales. Did you catch that? We're talking about a shark so massive that it ate whales. But this creature's large size and equally large appetite was a result of evolution. It all started with the megalodon's ancestors which hunted marine creatures that were predecessors of modern-day whales. Fossil evidence provides enough proof of this fact. With time, whales grew bigger and new species appeared. 
sharks were diversifying as well. All this led to the following evolutionary chain of prehistoric sharks that resulted in the appearance of the mighty species Carcaraclus megalodon. Great 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 grandpappy Odinus obliquus lived 65 million years ago. Carcaraclus atsuaticus then appeared 59 million years ago. It was followed by Carcaraclus aracolatus 54 million years ago. This shark later evolved into Carcaraclus angustidens about 33 million years ago. Approximately 22 million years ago, Carcaraclus chubutensis came into the picture. And finally, 16 million years ago, good old Carcaraclus megalodon eventually made its way into the world. Evolution is a fascinating thing, isn't it? These sharks just kept getting bigger and bigger until we ended up with a 60-foot-long whale-eating monster with 7-inch-long teeth. These giant teeth had evolved from ones that helped their bearer consume bite-sized prey to those that could tear huge creatures into pieces. Plus, the megalodon had approximately 280 of these ginormous teeth arranged in five rows. Lost teeth were typically replaced within two days max, and all those teeth came down on the shark's prey with incredible force. In fact, the megalodon had the most powerful bite known to humankind. According to computer models, this super shark had 24,000 to 40,000 pounds of bite force. That's 10 times more powerful than the bite of a great white or even the modern crocodile. It's even two to three times stronger than the bite force of the feared T-Rex. Fossilized megalodon teeth have been discovered in different regions of the world, from North and South America all the way to Australia, New Zealand, and Japan. This means that this predator lived almost everywhere on Earth. At the same time, the sharks seemed to prefer warm waters where there were plenty of food sources. The megalodon went extinct about 2.6 million years ago. Unfortunately, they most likely represented the final link of the evolutionary chain of this particular species of giant sharks. In November 2012, scientists discovered new shark fossils in South America. These remains included a complete jaw with teeth and several vertebrae. The teeth of this new shark were saw-like, but they weren't as sharp as those of the great white or megalodon. They were somewhere between the smooth teeth of the fish-eating mako shark and the jagged and sharp ones of the great white, which are suitable for munching bigger animals. According to the most recent study based on these remains, great whites are by no means descendants of the megalodon. After specialists analyzed the fossils, they came to the conclusion that great whites had more in common with mako sharks. Both species were likely to have branched off from the now extinct broad-toothed mako approximately 5 million years ago. According to the analysis, these two species have a lot in common as far as teeth are concerned. The root and tooth structure are pretty similar, and they have an almost identical trajectory of growth. That's how teeth change in shape and size during a shark's life. On top of that, an examination involving a high-resolution electron microscope discovered that the great white's teeth have a significantly different shape and serration spacing from those of the megalodon. The great white has much sharper cutting tools than the prehistoric shark. Both of these sharks' teeth are sort of oval-shaped, but according to experts, this is the result of convergent evolution. This means that the teeth evolved independently, but ended up with a similar form because the functions they fulfilled were alike. But the megalodon teeth are a lot thicker, and the serrations are much more regular and less pronounced. The roots of the teeth are V-shaped, the teeth of the great white, on the other hand, are slimmer, sharper, and have a rectangular-shaped root. The last argument scientists provide to prove that the megalodon and great white shark aren't related is the fact that these species coexisted for about 10 million years. But while the meg preferred warm regions, great whites lived in the cool waters of the northern Atlantic. They, quite understandably, avoided warm areas dominated by the mighty megalodon. These facts made paleontologists doubt that these two species share the same genus or even the same family, but they both do share our utmost fascination and curiosity. What theory do you believe in? Tell us in the comments below.
If you learned something new and interesting from this video, then give it a like and share it with your friends. Remember to subscribe to this channel because life is more exciting on the bright side.